Praise the Lord. New year, praise the Lord. The Lord will walk with us in Jesus' name. He'll take your hand. Where is that hand? And I'll anoint that hand in Jesus' name. I rejoice with every one of you that this year will be a really new year. He'll bless the work of your hand. He will walk with you. You will not be alone. You will not be lonely. And anything that will distract or diminish your blessing, he'll wipe away in Jesus' name. This is the third Sunday of the month and of the year. And I've already said, Happy New Year, first Sunday. Happy New Year, second Sunday. It's not too much. Happy, prosperous New Year. The Lord bless every one of you in Jesus' name. He will bless me. He will bless you. Your joy will be greater than it had ever been. Let somebody shout New Year. Amen. Father, we thank you for the goodness that you have shown us already. Lord, we pray your grand strength to every one of your children this year in Jesus' name. We will stand our ground. We will not fall. With courage and strength and conviction, we move on in the new year in Jesus' name. You will hold the hands of your children. They will not falter. And your blessings for this new year will multiply in Jesus' name. We pray that our children, our youths, our students on the campus, our papas, our mamas, our fathers, mothers, pastors, overseers, everyone, with every family, will have a new taste of great joy and fulfillment this year in Jesus' name. Why pull our tears away? I will pray, Lord, wherever there's any problem, any challenge, even this day, take everything away by your mighty power. All the sorrows of the past, everything is gone. A new day, a new dawn, new strength, new energy, new joy of the Lord. Shower upon your people in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to your First Chronicles chapter 28. First Chronicles chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 1. And David assembled all the princes of Israel, the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course, and the captains over the thousands, and the captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king and of his sons, with the officers, and with the mighty men, and with the valiant men unto Jerusalem. And then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God. And as made ready for the building, as made ready for the building. And then it says in verse 3, But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. As we come to the two chapters that end uh, First Chronicles, you will see what the Lord is saying. 
And as we approach this for our New Year covenant service, as we think about the covenant, by the way, when we say we're making a covenant with the Lord, it's an agreement, it's an, a kind of a association with the Lord, and we're coming into an agreement with the Lord that this year, all the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life. All the promises of God, yes and amen, in your family, at your place of work, all that he has covenanted, everything he will do, he will accomplish in Jesus' name. When we say covenant to the Lord, it's a definite step that we take. And he already is on the other side, and we are on this side, and he wants to make a covenant, an agreement with us. Number one, if we're going to have a new covenant, we must new creatures. He does not make a covenant with the old sinful self and old sinful nature. If he wants to make a covenant with you, you understand that he wants you to understand that you are washed in the blood, you are cleansed in the blood, you become a new creature. And he says that's not the end of the covenant because there are, many, there are a lot of people in the various churches, they are born again, they are new creatures in Christ, but they have not come into a covenant, a definite covenant of the Lord. He says, and then I give you a new commandment, a new commandment. You see, you cannot be in a covenant with the Lord and be a new creature in Christ and then walk according to the old covenant. Old covenant. And you know the problem with people, when they read the Old Testament, they do not know how to translate and transform what they read in the Old Testament to the New Testament or to the New Covenant and then the New Commandment. He gives us a new commandment. And he says, a new commandment I give unto you, if this year is going to be a new year, thank God for you, it's going to be a new year. You must walk by the new commandment in the old, love your friends and hate your enemies. In the new, you love God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. And you love your neighbor as yourself. And you love the brethren as I have loved you. You know, if you come into a new covenant with the Lord, when you come to that new covenant, number one, you're a new creature. Number two, you have a new commandment. There's a new confession in your mouth. A new confession in your mouth. If you are just coming out of that altar, I've made a covenant with the Lord. Before you made that covenant, there are some things you used to say, the old language. And the old, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's tough, and sometimes it's difficult difficult sometimes people um, are friendly sometimes they push me away that's the old language but this year a new confession I will succeed that's my new confession I said I will succeed I'm actually saying it on your behalf I will do well I will succeed I will achieve the promises of our oh, yes and amen in my life this year in Jesus name a new confession and you know he gives us a new commission a new commission he says now that you have come into this new testament agreement and covenant with me there is a commission i give unto you and that new commission will occupy your time it will occupy your very service he says go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and it's a new consecration a new consecration I see some people as they came out of uh, Jan uh, December 31st until January 1st. To start with, they slept more on January 1st than uh, even the previous days of December. You know why? They were just coming from the COVID, from the watch night service. And because of the extra time they took that night, January 1st made them sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. And they come to the first week of January and then he's sleeping and sleeping. But if you're going to make a new achievement this year, you will rise up and walk. I will rise up and build. I will rise up and I will run the race set before me in Jesus' name. There is a new commission, and that new commission demands a new consecration. A new consecration that this year you'll not be sluggish, 
you'll not be slack, you'll not be dragging your feet. There will be a new consecration. What you are not doing before, you will begin to do. Our minister made us to make a covenant, a commitment, and he said, I will be at the Monday Bible study, and then we repeated that. He said, It's not God enough, and then we all repeated that. Have a new consecration this year that what you are not doing before, you'll not be attending Monday Bible study, or maybe you thought the revival hour, or it is uh, the workers' meeting you are always missing, and then the Tuesday leaders' meeting. Uh, sometimes you are there, sometimes you are not there. If there's a little challenge, then you are pulling back this year a new consecration. I said, a new consecration. And uh, you know, as we are going to read all this, we are going to discover what David said. He contributed. All the elders contributed. And all the people, as they came together, it was a really new covenant with them. A new contribution. New contribution. You are coming to the house of God. Wants to take your Bible and you take your songbook. Uh -uh, there's something you have forgotten. You have to take your offering. You have to take your offering. And every time you come before the Lord, you will not come come empty i said you will not come empty because a new contribution is very necessary as you come before the lord and then that now summarizes the uh, new covenant we have and this year a new compensation in your life what are you a new compensation in your life god will answer all your prayers this year it will go beyond asking for all your answering all your prayers even the things you don't ask the lord is going to give you i see you happier this year i see you healthier this year and i see you holier this year i see a new committed newly committed congregation this year blessings will follow after you blessings will run after you as we have read uh, those uh, three verses, I want to talk to you today on the highest service with the greatest benefits. The highest service with the greatest benefits. David is uh, a good example in very many ways. He wanted to build a temple to the Lord, a befitting temple, a magnificent temple, a great temple, a glorious temple. And God said, no. You see many people, that's where they were stuck. Okay, I wanted to be my best. I wanted to give my best. And God said, no. And so they don't do any other thing after that. But David said, although I cannot build because of this, he didn't even argue. But he told me to fight those battles. And they were the battles of the Lord that I fought. And you are telling me because I fought those battles, I cannot build now? No question. No argument. This year, you will not question God. You will not argue with God. And then David said, I will make preparation for everything that is needed to build the temple. Already you know that the temple now eventually was built. And now, how do we serve in that temple? What do we give to the Lord so that this year will be a new covenant year for you, for me, for us, all together in Jesus' name? The highest service with the greatest benefits. Highest service, you'll give a higher service this year. A greater service this year. A more profitable service this year in Jesus' name. And then the greatest of benefits will come unto you. Okay, unto me. It will come in Jesus' name. There are three things we're going to look at. Number one, the compelling comprehension of our task. The compelling comprehension of our task. Number two, the complete consecration of our treasure. The complete consecration of our treasure. And then our courageous commitment to his holy temple. 
our courageous commitment to his holy temple number one tell me number one over there somebody the compelling comprehension of our task as we come to the end of building the temple and uh, we're talking about that solomon's temple and we're talking about this temple too and we come to the conclusion and by the grace of god is giving us a great temple a great sanctuary a great place of worship what's the compelling comprehension of our task what are we supposed to do and what commission and what great assignment and what great duty is the lord committing into our hands we're coming to first chronicles chapter 29 first chronicles chapter 29 i am reading from verse 29 it says now the acts of david the king first and last behold they are written in the book of samuel the seer and in the book of nathan the prophet and in the book of Gad the seer with all his reign and his might and the times that went over him and over Israel and over all the kingdoms of the countries I want you to underline those last words all the kingdoms of the countries as I look at David I saw that the great things that he did surprising surprising he did outside the temple outside the temple yes the temple had not been built and god had called david and he defeated goliath outside the temple and he raised up all those people in the army to fight the battles of the lord outside the temple and he wrote the psalms that the whole world now is benefiting from outside the temple i'm saying something to you church i'm saying that god has called us to service in the temple and outside the temple and many people actually at the time of the lord jesus christ the children of israel and the priests and the laborers they have concentrated all their services in the temple and in luke chapter 10 luke chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 27 in luke chapter 10 verse 27 and he answering said thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy might and thy neighbor as thyself and he said unto him thou hast answered right this due and thou shalt live but he willing to justify himself said unto jesus and who is my neighbor who is my neighbor our neighbors are outside the temple the sinners are outside the temple the souls that jesus died for they are outside the temple the poor the needy they are outside the temple the widows and the fatherless that were to minister to they are outside the temple the people that are contemplating suicide and they're dying by the day and going to hell they are outside the temple and we have a service to them outside the temple so that we're not like the children of israel that eventually limited everything they did in a narrow little corner of the temple look at verse 30 and jesus answered said a certain man went down from jerusalem to jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down a certain priest who was coming from the temple he had done the service in the temple he came that way and when he saw him him, he passed by on the other side he had done what he should do inside the temple outside the temple now on the road where we're to show that love on the road which were to minister to the people that have been let have dead by the world have dead by satan have dead by enemies of their souls when we should minister to them 
we passed by on the other side and we're seeing already I've done everything I ought to do in the temple now this is outside the temple and he wants us to serve he wants us to have a compelling a conviction a driving comprehension of our service outside the temple it tells us in verse 32 and likewise a Levite when he was at that place came and looked on him and he passed on the other side what's your attitude after the church service what's your attitude after you have served effectively Search uh, kind of courageously, and you have served spiritually, and you have served profitably in the temple. When you go outside the temple, as your service finished, no, the service we have in the temple is to prepare us for our service outside the temple, so that we're not just saying, "I've done my part, I've done my best, and the rest of the day I can go and rest." Now, the rest of the week I can go and rest our service is outside the temple the major part and but in verse 33 but a certain Samaritan as a journey came where he was and when he saw him he had compassion on him and when I went to him this outside the temple and bound up his wounds and pouring in oil and wine setting him on his own beast and brought him into an inn not into the temple and took care of him and on the morrow when he had de when he departed he took out two pence this is contribution not only contribution in the church contribution in the temple even outside the temple and he gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him take care of him take care of people in your community take care of people in your neighborhood take care of people care for them give them the water of life and give them the bread of life and give them the spiritual treatment they need so that they will not die in their sins take care of him and whatsoever does spend this more when i come again i will repay thee which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor to him that fell among the thieves and uh, he said he that showed mercy on him and then said Jesus unto him everybody one two three go say it aloud go and do thou likewise go out of the service go out of the sanctuary and go and do thou likewise minister to the people that are outside and bring them to the knowledge of the Lord actually as we come back to the Old Testament, we are back now in First Kings chapter 4. First Kings chapter 4. And we're going to look at Solomon himself and how he served the Lord. We're going to look at Solomon himself and what he did outside that temple. In First Kings chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 29, and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and likeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt, for he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, the Ezra Hyde and Haman, the and, and Chakol, and uh, the Dada, and the sons of uh, Mah Mahal, and his fame was in all nations round about. All nations round about. And he speaks 3,000 proverbs. He speaks 3,000 proverbs, not limited to the temple. And then he sent out the message in your heart in those proverbs. He sent it every where we even have one whole book of the Bible concentrating on the Proverbs and the majority of those chapters written by Solomon benefiting people outside the temple benefiting people that are there in all the nations and his songs were a thousand and five and he speak of trees and all that and in verse 34 and there came 
of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon. The temple could not contain them because they came from all over. And as they came from all over, he was ministering to them from all the kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. Isn't that the same thing we are called to do? Isn't that the same thing we see the New Testament people doing as we come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 10? They went outside the temple, they went outside the sanctuary, and they shared the wisdom of the Word of God, the wisdom of the grace of God, the wisdom of the Word of salvation with people outside the temple we're coming to acts chapter 10 and i'm reading from verse 33 acts chapter 10 verse 33 immediately therefore i say unto thee and thou hast well done that thou art come now therefore are we all here present not in the temple in the house that's in the house of cornelius before god to hear all the things that are commanded thee of god in the house fellowship, not in the temple, share the word of God. In the houses, in your neighborhood, share the word of God. In your own house, share the word of God. There's a Cornelius there that opens his door and he gets all his friends and all his neighbors. Share the word of God. Don't ever you think, because I've done that in the temple, I've done my assignment in the temple, and then outside the temple, I have nothing else that I should do, but it share the word of God look at it verse 44 while Peter yet spake these words in the house of Cornelius not in the temple the Holy Ghost fell on all them which had the word and day of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured the gift of the Holy Ghost I pray the Lord will give us wisdom. I want to hear a good new year. Amen. Amen. We're looking at Proverbs. Proverbs. I'm reading from chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 20. You remember? As you look at chapter 1 of Proverbs, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. The son of David, king of Israel. Look at verse 20. Wisdom cries without she utters her voice in the streets now god gave uh, wisdom to solomon he didn't uh, just uh, cover himself confine himself to the temple if you want to hear my wisdom if you want to benefit from my wisdom come over here to the temple no not at all wisdom cries without and uttereth her voice in the streets and so on the streets and the highways we share the word of god we're looking at luke chapter 13. luke chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 26. luke chapter 13 verse 26 then shall you begin to say we have eaten and drunk in thy presence thou hast taught in our streets that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The people will come to him on the final day, on the last day, and they will say, We didn't hear you in the temple, but we heard you on the streets. In the streets, so spoke the word of God to us. You see what the people of old, what they did, they took the word of God, they took the grace of God, they took the revelation of God right into the streets. And it says, it's not just in the temple, you taught in our streets, you preached in our streets, you spoke about salvation, you spoke about eternal life, and you spoke about what will profit us for all eternity, and you did it on the streets we're coming back to the old testament second chronicles chapter 20. in second chronicles chapter 20 i'm reading here now from verse 20. second chronicles chapter 20 we're looking at verse 20 and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. Into the wilderness of Tekoa. They didn't just, you know, tie themselves down to the temple. A magnificent temple it was. A great temple it was. But then it says, 
Now these people were in the wilderness, and as they went forth, Joshua stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. You are believing the Lord this year, you will be established in Jesus' name. Your life established. Your family established. The work of your hand established. And every proposal and project of your life established by the Lord in Jesus' name. Believe this prophets and so shall ye prosper. Somebody is going to prosper this year. What is that man? What is that woman? What is that boy? What is that girl? Prosperity all now in Jesus' name. In your soul, prosperity. Your spiritual life, prosperity. Your work, profession, prosperity. You will not live from hand to mouth. Look at, look at verse 21. And when they had consulted with the people, what, where were they at this time? Temple or wilderness, where were they? I said, where were they? In the wilderness, when they consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord in the wilderness, uh -huh, and that should praise the beauty of holiness in the wilderness outside the temple, of course, as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing in the temple, I said in the temple, tell me where, say it aloud. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambush, ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and the Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. I was waiting for an amen. You know, we don't limit our singing just to the temple the old people's homes are there why don't you go and sing to them and the hospitals are there why don't you have a time to make those people happy nobody is visiting them nobody is thinking of them there are people in the prison why don't you arrange and organize and go and sing to them there there are people that are just on the sick bed and they're there and they're suffering let somebody go there let a singer go there and go there into their wilderness and sing unto them your singing will heal the sick your singing will raise the dead your singing will bring miracles to the people in jesus name acts of the apostles chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 25 acts of the apostles chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 25 it says in verse 25 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god in the temple i said in the temple where in the prison and the prisoners heard them why don't you join the prison ministry and go and sing over them why don't you go to the people that are imprisoned in their need imprisoned in their sicknesses and go outside the temple and go and sing this year will be a year of miracles a year of yokes broken a year of all the perplexities of the people being taken away outside the temple in jesus name and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately somebody shout immediately all the doors were opened all the doors were open for paul and silas doing the singing their doors were open and for you singers this year your doors will be open youth choir adult choir campus choir children choir doors that were closed before as you sing in the temple and you sing outside the temple doors will be open for you in jesus name and then for the rest of us that were receiving the ministration of the singing thank god as the choir is singing in the temple our doors will be open doors of opportunity open and doors those who are bound in sicknesses and in chains all the chains will be broken in jesus name and as you go outside as you go outside and you're singing the songs of the lord outside the sanctuary and outside the temple 
doors are going to open immediately immediately all the doors were open and how many people's bands i said how many people's bands and everyone's bands were loosed looks like all your bands are loose this morning all your yokes are broken this morning the compelling comprehension of our task outside the temple the compelling comprehension of our task outside the temple we're coming to jonah in jonah i'm reading from chapter 3 jonah chapter 3 and as we read from jonah chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 1 and the word of the lord came unto jonah the second time saying arise go on to nineveh there's no temple there go on to nineveh it's just on the streets go on to nineveh it's just the whole city go on to nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching you know, that i bid thee preaching should not be limited to only the temple you know inside the temple inside the sanctuary inside the church building i've done all the preaching i can do no it's good to preach in the temple then you go outside the temple and preach unto nineveh the preaching that i be the jonah arose and he went unto nineveh according to the word of the lord now nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey and jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown so the people of Nineveh believed God it's not only the word we're here in the temple that we believe the word we're here in the house fellowship we believe and the word we're here as a brother is talking to a brother sister talking to sister anywhere and everywhere we believe the word and faith will walk in your life and he proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them and the word came the word came from the street to the palace not there's no temple here the word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe up from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes and he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh, through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast hurt nor flock taste any sin, let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn, let them turn, let them repent, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands that's not in the temple outside the temple on the street in Nineveh in verse 10 and God saw their works and that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them and he did it not if Jonah had been waiting okay I'm here at the gate of a temple let them come if you come you'll hear the word of god Nineveh will not come go to them and take the ministry and take the word the word of repentance the word of grace and the word of salvation take it outside the temple let them hear and as they hear many people will come to know the lord in jesus name acts of the apostles chapter 8 acts of the apostles chapter 8 I'm reading here from verse 4. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word like Jonah did and he went out of the temple, out of his uh, major city and he went to Nineveh. So the people cheer, they had to go outside the temple and they had to go outside and went, they went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down unto the city of uh, Samaria and preached Christ unto them and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake herein and seen the miracles which he did for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many miracles of deliverance will happen in this city in your city 
as we lay hands on the sick outside the temple outside the sanctuary they're going to be healed in jesus name and many that were possessed with, the, with them and many taking with palsy and the day that were lame they were healed and there was great joy in that temple and there was great joy in their temple where in that city in that city that's what the lord is telling us we need to have a new comprehension this new year you have a new covenant of the lord and you must have a new comprehension of the might of christ of the will of god and as we do that the lord himself will reward you abundantly in jesus name proverbs chapter 24 in proverbs chapter 24 i'm reading here from verses 11 and 12 proverbs chapter 24 verses 11 and 12 if thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death that's outside the temple they are drawn unto death some of them are on the verge of committing suicide they are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain if thou sayest behold we knew it not because you don't know what your neighbors are going through. We knew it not. Because you're not even going to visit them. We knew it not. Because we've done everything we need to do in the temple and outside the temple. We did nothing. We knew it not. Does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul uh, shall he not render to every man according to his works? Look for them outside. Look for them outside the temple. We're looking at James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I read from verse 19. James chapter 5, verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do hear from the truth, any of you do hear from the truth, a backslider in your community, a backslider who has stopped, come into the temple and say, Come to the temple. No, you will not come. It's even a shame to come. But it says, And one convert him. Go to them where they are and convert them. Go to them where they are and convict them. Go to them where they are and reach out to them with a hand of love, hand of mercy, word of grace. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. God used you more. I said the Lord used you more in the temple and outside the temple give me a good amen. amen the compelling comprehension of our task outside the temple point number two the complete consecration of our treasure the complete consecration of our treasure we're coming to first chronicles chapter 28 and i'm reading from verse 8 First Chronicles chapter 28, reading from verse 8. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God. Keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever and thou solomon my son know thou the god of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart in the temple and outside the temple at home in the office in the market serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind for the lord searches all hearts and understand death all the imaginations of the thoughts if thou seek him he'll be found of thee but if thou forsake him he will cast thee off how long forever let's come to chapter 29 verse 5 chapter 29 reading from verse 5 it says in verse 5 the gold for the things of gold and silver for the things of silver and all manner of work to be made by the hands of the artificers and who then who then who then is willing to consecrate his service this 
day unto the Lord. Who then is willing to consecrate a service this day unto the Lord? There is no day that shall pass without you consecrating all your service unto the Lord. There is this Monday now. Who then is willing this day to consecrate his time to the Lord, his treasure to the Lord, his talent to the Lord? Here is Tuesday. Who then is willing this day to consecrate his talent and to consecrate his time and to consecrate his treasure unto the today? Let's say today is Wednesday, and there is no meeting in this in this in the sanctuary, there's no meeting in the, in the temple. This very day, when there's no meeting in the sanctuary, who then is willing this day to consecrate his service unto the Lord? Every day of your life, every moment of your life, who then is willing to consecrate and to commit his service unto of the Lord is treasure unto the Lord. We're reading from Proverbs chapter 3. In Proverbs chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That's every day, every day, whether there's a meeting in the temple or no meeting in the temple, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And that's the duty for every day. Depart from evil in the language of your mouth in the work of your hand, in the plan of your life. Everything that you do, it says, depart from evil. It shall be health to all thy neighbor and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Honor the Lord with thy substance. When you give in the sanctuary, when you give in the temple, you're honoring the Lord. But when in your neighborhood you give to the poor, when in your neighborhood you send foodstuffs and you send clothes to the naked and you send help to the people that do not have enough to maintain their lives, you're doing your service unto the Lord. It says you honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy pants be filled with plenty. He will reward your generosity. He will reward your giving. No amen now. It says, Your bands shall be filled with plenty, and thy presses burst out with new wine. Amen. And let's see what somebody did. We're looking at this now in Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. And we're reading from verse 20. Genesis chapter 28, verse 20. And Jacob vouched a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. Here is uh, the vow, here is the pledge, here is the consecration of Jacob. He says, I'm not waiting until I have a bulging bank account before I can make a vow to the Lord. I'm not waiting until I have millions and millions and millions before I can make a vow of committing my treasure and committing my substance unto the Lord. He said, if God will just give me be with me and if God will just keep me in the way that I go and, and, and that I have bread to eat and clothes to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace then the Lord will be my God the Lord will be my God in the temple outside the temple the Lord will be my God in the church and in the house the Lord will be my God in the market and in my place of work, the Lord will be my God. Anywhere and everywhere and every day of my life, the Lord will be my God. How about you? I said, how about you? And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely without fail, I was surely without interruption, I was surely without unfaithfulness, I will surely give somebody there tell me the taste unto thee, the taste unto thee, Jacob 
was not in a place they were arguing about whether to give to God or not to give to God. But he, he said, I made a vow, I've made a vow, I will give unto the Lord, and the Lord will reward your contribution in Jesus' name. Malachi, Malachi chapter 3. In Malachi chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 10. Malachi chapter 3, we're looking at verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring it while you are coming. Don't say I forgot. Bring it. If you're always forgetting every time, uh, are you going to make this year a new prosperous year? Because it is out of what you give, uh, the Lord will multiply and give back unto you. I said the Lord will multiply and give back unto you. So bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And brought me now here we says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There's going to be outpouring of blessing this year. Upon your life and outpouring. Upon your work and outpouring. Upon every kind of thing you do for the glory of God, upon of blessing in Jesus' name. And there shall not be room enough to receive it. I'm waiting for that day. I said, I'm waiting for that day. When you will say, Lord, it's enough, it's enough. I've got more than enough. And that day will come this year. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed. Is that you? Okay, read that and say for yourself. Say that again. Me. Use me instead of you. Say that again. And all nations shall call you blessed, and ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. And the people of God shout, Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 6, and we're looking at verse 19. It says, lay not for yourselves treasures upon the earth. You see, there are many people, they eat everything they've got. They eat everything they have earned. They consume everything they have worked for. He says, don't do that. There must be a part you are reserving for the treasure for the Lord. It says, lay not for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moths and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven treasures in heaven when you give to the lord treasures in heaven when you give to the poor treasures in heaven when you give to the needy treasures in heaven when you give to supply the need of other people you are laying treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal but where your treasure is there will your heart be also your heart is in heaven. I said your heart is in heaven because your treasures are in heaven. This year, new year, you'll give more than you gave last year. You'll give more than you ever gave in Jesus' name. In the temple, you'll give of your substance, of your treasure, of your time, of your gifts, of your money, and then outside, you'll give to the people in need as well in Jesus' name. We're reading from Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 41. Mark chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much. Many that were rich, casting up much, they were not calculating with God. I cannot give more than this, I cannot give more than that. They casting up much this year, the Lord will make you rich and rich for the kingdom 
a reach for the progress of the gospel and you're casting much of your substance in Jesus name and there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites which made which make a father and he called and thus Jesus called uh, unto him his disciples and said unto them verily I say unto you that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which cast into the treasury for all they cast in did cast in of their abundance but she of her want she out of her poverty she out of her penury did cast in tell me did cast in all that she had even all her living some people gave 10 percent other people gave 15 percent of their income other people gave 20 percent of their income and jesus said they cast in much they cast in much but she cast in 100 percent and the lord rewarded her the lord will reward you okay the lord will reward me or reward you in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. That's the word of the Lord. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Whenever you come to the presence of the Lord, don't come empty-handed. Give, and it shall be given unto you. It's your new commitment for the new year and it's your new contribution for the new year it's your new consecration for the new year give and it shall be given unto you good measure press now shaking together running over running over your basket running over your paws running over your account running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that she meet with her it shall be measured unto you again amen first corinthians chapter 16 in first corinthians chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 1 first corinthians chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 1 in first corinthians chapter 16 verse 1 here the word of the lord instructs us it says now concerning the collection for the saints concerning the collection for the saints what does that mean when we contribute in the house of god we're contributing for the saints because we're contributing for the upkeep of the house of god of the temple of god of the sanctuary of the lord of all the things that are necessary to be used in ministering to the saints and it says for that collection as i have given order to the churches of galatia even so do ye upon the first day of the week which one is the first day of the week i said which is the first day of the week sunday it says in the first day of the week let every one of you let some of you let the majority of you tell me if you are part of this i said tell me let every one of you, every one of you means everyone that comes to the worship. And when your child is coming to the service on the first day of the week on Sunday, you will give to your child what she is to offer. And then you will give uh, to your teenagers what they're supposed to offer. And they need to learn giving and giving and giving in the house of God and even giving to their neighbors and giving to fellow students and giving to indigent students in their community, in their colleges. It says, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him as god has prospered him that's the language of proportion 
that's the language of percentage as God has prospered him that there be no gathering when I come look at verse 15 in verse 15 I beseech you brethren ye you know the house of Stephanas that it is the first fruits of her care and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints you'll addict yourself to the ministry of the saints in Jesus name second Corinthians chapter 8 reading from verse 1 Second Corinthians chapter 8, reading from verse 1, Moreover, brethren, we do you to which of the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded to the riches of their liberality. They were poor and yet they gave abundantly and it says for through their power i bear them i bear record yea and beyond their power even beyond our expectation and beyond their possession they were willing of themselves praying us pleading with us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints and this they did and this they did they didn't just say pray this this they did they didn't just propose this they did they didn't just say you know say i will i will i will they actually did it and this they did not as we hope but first gave their own selves unto the lord and unto us by the will of God is so much that we desire Titus that he which that had the as he had begun and so he would also finish in you the same grace also amen, amen. chapter 9 reading from verse 6 in chapter 9 verse 6 but this I say he that so sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he that soweth bountifully, tell me the rest, shall reap also bountifully. You will give abundantly unto the Lord. Every meeting day, you'll give to the Lord. And outside the meeting days, you will give in your neighborhood in Jesus' name. First Chronicles chapter 16. First Chronicles chapter 16 reading from verse 29 first chronicles chapter 15 chapter 16 verse 29 give unto the lord the glory due unto his name anything you're giving to the lord every sunday every meeting day during the week what you give as yourself of all that you possess is this all that is due unto his name is this all that is appropriate for what he has done for you give unto the lord the glory due unto his name bring an offering when you are coming bring an offering is for the lord and come before him and worship the lord in the beauty of holiness amen, amen. point number three now a courageous commitment in his holy temple a courageous commitment in his holy temple look at first chronicles chapter 28 first chronicles chapter 28 i read from verse 9 in first chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 and thou solomon my son know thou the god of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind for the lord searches all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of their thoughts if thou seek him he'll be found of thee but if thou forsake him tell me he will cast thee off forever what a good preacher david was and he told the truth as the truth was as the truth is in the word of god seek the lord he'll be found of you but if you forsake him he'll cast you off forever verse 20 in verse 20 it says and david said to solomon his son be strong 
and of good courage and do it be strong and of a good courage and do it without courage you're not doing everything the lord has called you to do and if you're going to do what the lord has called you to do in the temple and outside the temple you'll be strong and of a good courage you will do the will of god in jesus name fear not not be dismayed for the lord god even my god will be with you will be with you he will not fail you nor forsake you until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the lord you'll finish everything he has committed unto you in jesus name now this point number three is our courageous commitment without corrupting his holy temple our courageous commitment without contaminating his holy temple um, solomon should have realized what the father was telling him it's not just the physical building it's your own building your own temple we're coming to first corinthians chapter 3 in first corinthians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 9 First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 For we are laborers together with God Ye are God's husbandry Ye are God's building Ye are God's building As you are taking care of the sanctuary You take care of the sanctuary of your life The temple of your body Look at verse 16 Chapter 3 verse 16 Know not that Know ye not That ye are the temple of God And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you and the spirit of God does not dwell in a temple made with hand but the temple of the temple of God which is your body the temple of God has the spirit of God dwelling there if any man therefore defile the temple of God him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy which temple ye are you be a holy temple of God a righteous temple of God a clean cleansed temple of God in Jesus name we're coming to chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 19 um, that's first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which ye have of God ye and for ye and ye are not your own for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's you belong to God more than the temple belongs to God you belong to God why do we say more than the temple belongs to God the temple will be left behind after the rapture will take the temple that is our body will take it to be with the lord the temple the physical temple is going to remain here on earth but the, but the believer as a whole body spirit and soul you will be with the lord in heaven eventually and so it's more important you take care of that holy temple in second corinthians chapter six second corinthians chapter six Verse 16, and watch agreement as the temple of God with idols. For ye are the temple of the living God, ye not a block, not sand, a cement, no stone, but ye not marble, but ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate says the lord and touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you and i will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters says the lord almighty amen, amen. ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 19 now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens were the saints and in the of the household of god and ye are built up 
upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto an holy temple in the Lord. Those are the people of God. Those who are blood washed and those who are cleansed and those who have been taken away from their sins, those who are born again, children of God, unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. We are the temple of God. Solomon perhaps did not realize that. He forgot what his father had told him. We're coming back to the Old Testament. We're looking at First Kings chapter 11. First Kings chapter 11, he took care to build the temple. He didn't take care to build his own temple, his own life, his own family. He didn't build his own spiritual life according to the word of God. And that's what he wants us to take care of. Yes, we serve in the temple, but don't forget your own temple. Don't forget that your body is the temple of the Lord. Take care of that. Let there be holiness, righteousness in that temple of the Lord. First Kings chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 4. First Kings chapter 11 verse 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives, in the plural, turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect, for the Lord is God. His father told him, serve the Lord with a perfect heart and a willing mind. But his heart was not perfect, for the Lord is God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess, the idol of the Zidonians, Zidonians and after Malcolm, the abomination of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father and, and, and did build and the, then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the idolatry, the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem, overlooking Jerusalem at the hill and for Molech the abomination of the children of Ammon, and likewise did, did he for all his strange wives. All his strange wives. He had the 300 wives, and he built all these the sanctuaries and shrines of idolatry, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because he said, was turned from the Lord God of Israel. He built the temple, but then he ruined his own holy temple, and he defiled his own holy temple, and the Lord had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this sin that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Therefore, the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept the covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rent the kingdom from thee and ways and will give it unto thy servant. He built the temple, but he lost the nation. You will not lose your life. You will not lose your soul. You'll put first things first in your life in Jesus' name. The service of the Lord, the holiness of the Lord, and the beauty of holiness in your own temple, in your own body, in your spirit, in your life in Jesus' name. After that, you'll serve the Lord with a perfect heart and a willing mind in Jesus' name. We're coming to Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 26. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 26. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? You will not sin. I said, You will not sin. I will not sin. I will not sin. 
with my eyes I will not see with my ears I will not see with my mouth I will not see with my hands I will not see with my body I will not see with my substance I will not see you see Moses uh, this is uh, Solomon for God that the most important thing uh, is to serve the Lord have a perfect heart have a willing mind and serve the Lord and keep away from sin did not Solomon king of Israel sin uh, by these things yet among many nations was there no king uh, like him who was beloved of his God and God made him king over all Israel nevertheless 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 even him did outlandish women cause to sin who will cause you to sin I said you will cause you to sin who will take the kingdom of God away from you who will take eternal life away from you who will take holiness away from you or oh, will take heaven away from your hand nobody will take heaven away from you in jesus name saved and sanctified the lord will keep you steadfast until the very end women will not cause you to sin men will not cause you to sin money will not cause you to sin business will not cause you to sin and all the things that may surround you the flesh the world and the devil will not cause you to sin in jesus name the lord will keep you this year you serve the lord with a new commitment with a new consecration with a new confession and with a new devotion in jesus name jude chapter one jude chapter one Verse 20, but ye building up yourselves is going to build a sanctuary or build up yourselves, build your family, build your life, build your eternal destiny. It says, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves or your most holy face, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. God will keep you. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Verse 24, now unto him that's able to keep you from falling. You will not fall. I will not fall. Our church will not fall. Our leaders will not fall. Our members will not fall your wife will not fall your husband will not fall your children will not fall and your parents and the lord who brought you into the gospel will not fall in jesus name now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever amen. amen the lord keep you this year as you serve in the temple you'll serve outside the temple and there you'll do appropriate things to keep your temple your body your life holy and righteous and pure before the lord in jesus name you'll give more than ever before and the compensation of the lord will come to your life in jesus name this year new year for you where are you stand up and tell the lord new year this year for you new consecration this new year new commitment this new year new confession this new year a new creature this new year a new commission this year a new contribution a new contribution a new contribution 
a new comprehension this year and great will be the blessings of God upon your life open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer